Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is your friendly neighborhood Oxhorn, and I'm here in Sanctuary today to talk a little bit about defense, my philosophy behind defense, and to defend why I go about defense the way I do. So if you've watched any of my settlement videos, you know that I don't build walls, and that instead I build these large guard stations right across from enemy spawn points. Every single settlement has its own enemy spawn points, and I'm using the settlement management software, which is available on PC and all consoles, to mark where the spawn points are in my settlements. This way, I know exactly where my attacks are going to come from, and I can prepare by having a really powerful defense setup. And in Sanctuary, I have this done for all three spawn points in this settlement. Now when I show people these attack stations and the spawn points, I invariably get some uh, person commenting saying, well these spawn points are inaccurate because I often get attacked in the middle of my settlement. Or uh, sometimes I'll fast travel into a settlement and the, se uh, the enemies are in a completely different location. And that doesn't mean that these spawn points are incorrect. The spawn points are still correct. Let's see, where's this one? Um, there it is, right there. Um, these spawn points are still accurate. The game is programmed to spawn enemy attacks here. But the reason that when you log into your uh, settlement, you find enemies in the middle of your town is due to the nature that Bethesda processes settlement attacks. So what, this is how it works. This is how I think it works anyway, based on a lot of experimentation. You get an alert somewhere in the world that your settlement is under attack. You go, okay, I gotta take care of this. You drop everything and you fast travel to your settlement. Now the game does a calculation. It calculates how long it would take you to walk from where you were to where you're supposed to go. Fast travel is not a teleportation system. Fast travel is just a convenient way for we gamers to get from point A to point B without actually having to walk there. But in the lore of the game, your character is still walking there and it does take in-game time. So that makes sense that when you actually arrive at your settlement, even though you're coming from your perspective as soon as you got the alert, your enemies have already found their way into your settlement. And that's why when you arrive at your settlement, you're oftentimes going to find attackers in other places besides the spawn points. So that begs the question, what's the point of knowing where the spawn points are? And that's a really good question. Now, the reason that I find the spawn points um, interesting, the reason why I think it's important to know where they are, is because sometimes I'll be in a settlement and then the settlement will get attacked while I'm in it. Or, sometimes I'm really close to a settlement when it gets attacked, and I'm able to get there before the attack starts. In those situations, then the enemies will always come from the spawn points. Look at all of these weapons I'm having to pick up. Now, um, th th another comment that I frequently get from readers and viewers is that I don't have any walls and therefore my settlement is really poorly protected and uh, this isn't going to uh, help in a, in, in a real attack, so on and so forth. And the reason I don't have any walls is due to the nature of settlement attacks that I just described to you. Since the game does a little bit of math and it calculates how long it's going to take your character to get to the settlement before it chooses where to place enemy attackers, it'll sometimes place those attackers within the walls of your settlement, which renders walls completely useless. Now, walls look great. If you want to have walls around your settlement because it makes you feel more fortified, or because it makes your settlement look really nice, then that's totally fine. It's your settlement, you can do whatever you want. But when it comes to basic game mechanics, the walls are only gonna help if the attackers actually spawn outside of them. And as we've already discussed, they only spawn outside of the walls, outside of the settlement, in a very few occasions. We also need to consider that there are some spawn points that are actually inside 
the bounds of your settlement. Longfellow's Cabin is one example, Egret Tours Marina is another example, and in those situations, it doesn't matter where, whether you have walls or not, the enemies are still going to spawn in the middle of your settlement. Uh, now, to counter that argument, many readers have said, well, there's this great mod out there called Settlement Attacks Beyond by Scary666 Scream. And what that mod does is it actually pushes all spawn point markers outside the bounds of your settlement. And that's true. That's a very useful mod. And if what you want to do is push all attack spawn points outside of your settlement, it's going to work fine. But that does not solve the problem that we just talked about, which is that the game still does the calculation and will sometimes put settler, uh, put enemies inside your settlement, even if the spawn point is outside your settlement, right? And the mod author even addresses this in his mod. And I'm going to read it directly from you. This is what he says. I have read your comments. Unfortunately, there seems to be some engine bug or limitation which leads enemies spawning right in the middle of the settlement when you fast travel every tenth or so attack. This has nothing to do with the regular attack spawn points because they are just ignored. That's the key point here. Spawn points are often ignored by the game engine if you're not actually in the settlement when the attack occurs. That is why I don't build any walls. From a purely game engine perspective, they truly are useless unless you're in the town when the ac actual attack occurs. They don't prevent enemies from getting in your town, and if you choose not to respond to attacks, the game doesn't even consider the walls that you have when trying to roll the dice. And that's another thing. I've had readers say, well, my uh, settlements are so heavily fortified that I don't even respond to attacks anymore. And that's fine. You don't have to respond to attacks, but the game doesn't actually consider your defense when it rolls the dice to decide whether or not you win or lose an attack. Basically, the way it works is if you choose not to defend your settlement, then Fallout 4 rolls the dice and gives you an X percent chance to win or to lose that attack. And I've tested this on a number of occasions. Um, when I've gotten an alert that I was going to get an attack, I have ignored it, and then sometimes I've won that. And then I've loaded a previous game save just before that alert appeared, and tried it again, and then sometimes I've won that attack. And it really doesn't matter how much defense I have in the actual settlement. Uh, Fallout 4 doesn't take into consideration the turrets you have, the guards you have, or the walls you have when deciding the outcome of that dice roll. It just rolls the dice. And that's why if you really want to uh, make sure that the happiness for all of your settlements stays high, and if you want to make sure that enemy raiders don't steal your resources, you really need to respond to every single uh, settlement defense that you get, which can be pretty, uh, pretty intense. Now, there are ways to reduce the number of enemy attacks that you get. Uh, some of those ways include making sure your settlement happiness is high. Uh, enemy attacks uh, have a lower chance of happening if your settlement has high happiness and making sure that your defense is high enough to meet those attacks. As long as you have one defense for every one settler, you're going to get the maximum bonus to reducing the amount of attacks that you can actually get. But the percentage chance that you get attacked never goes below 2%. Every single settlement in your game is going to have at least a 2% chance of being attacked every single day. That's even if you have 100 happiness and 3,000 defense, a completely unrealistic number, you're still going to have a base chance of 2% to get attacked. That's why sometimes you're going to get uh, three or four different settlements attacked in the same day, and that's because uh, you just lost the roll. You had a 2% chance of being attacked, and it just so happened that that happened on that day. Um, likewise, you could go long stretches where none of your settlements are ever attacked, and that's just because um, they only have a 2% chance to be attacked that day, and so the likelihood of them being attacked is pretty low. So let me demonstrate really quickly that the, attends, uh, the attack spawn points really do work that they are accurate by simply generating an attack using the settlement management software. And to do that, you start the program, you go to tasks, and you choose trigger an attack, highly experiment experimental. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm going to get attacked immediately. Sometimes I have to fast travel away and fast travel back for the attack to occur. So let's do that right now.
Was that it? Well, <laughs> that made quick work of them. Yeah, you can see that... Um, oh, cool. That I was attacked from this location, and uh, my turret system took care of it really well. Uh, but that seems like a really tiny attack. Usually when I'm attacked, I get, you know, 10 to 15 different raiders or gunners or super mutants. Uh, and it's just quite possible that the way that the settlement gen uh, management software generates attacks is really small. Yeah, it looks like we only got attacked from one spawn point. But notice that we did get attacked from that spawn point. Um, so, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to produce a quick video to try to answer some of these questions and dispel some of the uh, settlement attack myths that have been running around. Again, if you want to build walls, build walls. It's your game. It's your settlement. Make it however you want it to be. This is your world. I just wanted to explain the game mechanics so that we all better understood how attacks work before we go and start building these elaborate walls thinking that the walls are actually defending us. Oh, look, see, here's an example. Right here, there's a dead raider right in the middle of my, of my uh, settlement. And what probably happened is the enemy spawned over here somewhere. But um, since I was fast traveling back from Gorski Cabin, the game just fast forwarded the raider into walking over here so that by the time I actually appeared, this, the uh, enemy or the, the uh, raider was already dead because this guy was still in line sight of my, um, my missile turret over here. Also, it helps to arm your settlers uh, because if you're not there or if they do spawn in the middle of your settlement, you want your settlers to be well equipped. Now one drawback to that, which I'm going to get over in another, which I'm going to cover in another video, is that settlers um, have really low HP. They don't scale with your character as your character levels. So it's really good to arm them well with great armor and great weapons, but I'm going to cover that in another video. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If you learned something, if you liked this video, please let me know in the comments below. Subscribe for more content like this, and thank you all so very much for watching.